All right. Well, hello and welcome to our presentation. If you're looking to learn about eco schools, you've come to the right place. Uh, my name is Marie Tremblay and I'm with the Alberta Council for Environmental Education and I'll be moderating this session. Although, uh, as you might have noticed, I'm joined by several co-presenters, including Lindsay Bunce, who's the Executive Director of Eco Schools Canada. Sheena Bifford, who is the Elementary Science Learning Consultant with the CSSD. Olana Olafsson, who is the Sustainability Coordinator with the CBE. And Lindsay Lunau, who is the Environmental Outreach Coordinator with the City of Calgary. Now, um, please note that throughout our presentation, we're going to be sharing some useful resources that you can use with your students. And if you're interested in getting a copy of the presentation, including the links to these resources, I'll show you how to do that at the end of this presentation. Um, also note that this presentation is being recorded and will be made available later through the uh, ACE website. And ACE, by the way, is short, uh, the short form for the Alberta Council for Environmental Education. In case you haven't heard of the Alberta Council for Environmental Education, uh, we're a small nonprofit organization whose mission is to advance environmental education in Alberta's K-12 schools. Our vision is that Alberta's students are environmentally literate and equipped with the knowledge and skills to help create a sustainable future. And that's a little bit about us, but we'd love to learn a little bit about you who are on this uh, uh, session with us. Um, I'd like you to just take a minute now to, uh, if we could introduce ourselves in the chat. Uh, we'd love to uh, know uh, maybe your name and which school you're teaching at, uh, what grade or subject you teach. Uh, most of you, I imagine, are elementary teachers. So uh, I'd like to know which grade you're teaching. If you want to um, um, add that to the chat, uh, that would be really nice. In case um, this is the first session of the convention and the chat, you know, you can usually uh, access it through the bottom of your screen. Uh, there should be a, a toolbar and uh, uh, usually you can click on chat there to bring the chat up. Candice, welcome. All right, Vista Heights School. That's nice. Thank you. Stephanie from Kindergarten, Glamorgan. Nice. Stefania, thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, well, thank you so much for that. Let's keep on moving then. Um, all right. Well, uh, I do want to point out that this workshop is part of a two-day uh, two environmental symposium titled Hand in Hand, Working Together Towards a Sustainable Calgary. The symposium represents a collaboration between the Alberta Council for Environmental Education, the City of Calgary, and our environmental education community. The symposium consists of 12 exciting sessions that cover a range of topics, including the Eco Schools Certification Program, which you'll hear about today. Uh, but also we have uh, sessions on biodiversity, diversity, water and waste management, climate change, and Indigenous perspectives. Uh, to better meet your needs, these sessions are divided into an elementary and a secondary stream. And I just want to point out that this workshop is designed specifically for elementary uh, teachers. We do have a parallel workshop for secondary teachers that we'll be offering just after this. So uh, to give you a bit of an idea then of the outline for today, I'll begin with uh, providing you some context on how Eco Schools Canada came to Calgary. Uh, then Lindsay Bunce, uh, will, uh, the Executive Director of Eco Schools Canada, uh, will give us a tour of uh, the Eco Schools program and its powerful online platform. This will be followed by uh, Lindsay Lunau, who will tell us what the city of Calgary is doing in terms of environmental sustainability. And we'll then hear from our two school districts uh, representatives on how Eco Schools and Environmental Stewardship supports school district and learning priorities. And then finally, I'll come back at the end to do a wrap up. Now, there will be some opportunities for questions and answers. And so we encourage you to uh, put those questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, as I've mentioned before, you can access the chat through, uh, from the bottom of your screen. 
Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the City of Calgary is located on Treaty 7 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route of the Blackfoot nations, including the Tsitsika, Tikani, and Kainai, as well as the Tutsina and Stony Nakoda First Nations, and the Métis Region Number 3. We further acknowledge that the long history of Indigenous peoples is inextricably tied to this land and that a unique relationship exists between Indigenous peoples and the natural world. This relationship, which is based above all else on harmony with Mother Earth, has allowed the original inhabitants of these lands to survive and thrive for thousands of years prior to the arrival of the first Europeans. And as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has recognized, Reconciliation will never occur unless we're able to be reconciled with the earth. So today, we honor and acknowledge the knowledge keepers, elders, scientists, artists, youth, and teachers like yourselves who seek to move us toward reconciliation, not only with our Indigenous brothers and sisters, but also with our mother, the earth. And we'd like to acknowledge another reality that teachers are facing this year, COVID. And the many challenges and constraints that uh, teachers like yourselves have to deal with uh, because of it. Uh, you are our true heroes, and we are so happy to be here at this convention to support you in the important work that you do. All right, so let's move on then to, uh, to some context here about eco schools in Calgary. Well, it all started with the city of Calgary adopting its new climate action plan in 2018. And shortly thereafter, a group of us, including the Alberta Council for Environmental Education, the city of Calgary and Calgary's two major school districts came together to see how we can engage Calgary's school community in helping the city implement its own climate action plan. And this led to the creation of Calgary Schools for Climate Action. And one of our first objectives was to find an online framework that would allow schools to track their progress in implementing climate actions, and also to allow us to measure the collective impact of all of those actions in helping the city meet its climate action targets. Well, our search led us to EcoSchools Canada, a well-established environmental certification program for schools that was exactly what we were looking for. And you'll hear all about this amazing program as soon as I'm done talking here. <laughs> I'll get through my introduction. All right. Um, so very from the start, um, the, this, this collective, this group, um, we, uh, we identified three main goals that we wanted to achieve. And first, as I've explained already, was to engage the school community in collective environmental stewardship and climate action that supports real world action frameworks at multiple scales from local to global. And that's why we really wanted to tie what the school community was doing to the city's own action plans and strategies. Our second goal was to advance literacy around environment, energy, and climate. Of course, learning is always so important, um, is at the heart of what we do. And number three, to foster responsible environmental and global citizenship. And so here I'm just going to show a bit of a schematic, um, uh, how all of these pieces fit together. So the way we envision this is as we recognize that the curriculum is at the heart of what teachers do. So that's what you guys are, are, are hired to do is to teach the curriculum. So that has to be front and center always. But we also recognize that there's a lot of exist, wonderful existing programs and resources out there from our environmental education community that uh, exist to support teachers in delivering on the curriculum. And we don't want to, uh, we don't want to take away from that or create a new program that would compete with that, but rather we wanted to create a framework that would bring all of these good things together. And we wanted to provide some context. And then this is the, what we're layering on the context here, starting with um, the city's own climate action plan and environmental uh, stewardship initiatives. And 
adding one more layer then, how can we put that into the context of working with other schools, not only in Alberta, but across Canada? Um, so uh, Lindsay Bunt in a moment will tell you a lot more about EcoSchools Canada, but there's something to be said to being, for being tied into a national framework and being able to measure our collective impact of all schools, uh, not, a, not only in Calgary, but across Alberta and Canada. And then finally, at the global scale, to kind of tie that into the sustainable development goals. And I'm sure you're all familiar with these goals. I just thought I'd put them out here. But uh, it's a great framework for engaging in global citizenship. Uh, so I'm going to end uh, my little piece here. And I'm going to stop sharing. And at this point, I'll invite uh, Lindsay Bunce from um, EcoSchools Canada to tell us all about this fantastic program. Thanks so much, Marie. Um, just wanna check that everyone can see my screen here. It's taking a minute. There we go, yeah? Looks yeah, good. It's good. Perfect, great. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me to join this really rich panel and really excited to see that teachers are keen and interested in learning how um, they can access the EcoSchools framework and really celebrate and, um, and take advantage of the fantastic supports available in Alberta. We don't see ourselves as a competitor in this space. We see ourselves as a key collaborator and a way to really reinforce the learnings that ACE and the City of Calgary are, are bringing together to inform our next steps on climate change together. So a bit about us, um, we are a national charity um, and we do work with schools across Canada. We're also the national operator for EcoSchools with the Foundation for Environmental Education. And that means that we're connected to 70 other countries around the world that also deliver EcoSchools certification in one way or another. And so that network across the, the globe, in fact, um, represents about 19 million students and about 60,000 schools that are all working together to explore this issue of climate change and explore how they can take effective and important climate action. We are the longest standing certification program in Canada and all of the resources and tools that I'll be sharing with you today are bilingual and also free to publicly funded schools. And for some reason I cannot advance my side. There we go. Uh, we work with schools in sort of five areas. So one really building environmental leadership. So working with local partners like ACE and the city to find those opportunities to build environmental leadership and capacity across the education sector. We work to improve the operational efficiency of school buildings, create networks, um, so really connecting schools to resources, but also connecting schools to other schools across Canada that are doing this similar type of work, as well as strong regional and national partners. We are all about celebration and recognition. So within this collective impact framework, we really want to recognize the hard work that's going on in schools and how the K-12 sector is really moving that sustainability needle um, by taking action on the ground. And as uh, Marie mentioned as well, we connect to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So we are contributing to Canada's commitment in moving the needle as well around those SDGs. A little bit just about our reach very quickly. So last year um, we certified about 2000 schools across the country and engaged about 50,000 student leaders. Those 50,000 student leaders then in turn activated approximately 1 million students across their school community. So the movement is quite large. We work regularly with about 80 community partners on the ground, um, like ACE in Alberta, the Gaia Project in New Brunswick, really trying to ensure that we're accessing local supports, we're saying the right messages for the right groups of folks, um, and really making sure that we're connecting a, a, you know, a strong scaffolding around environmental education for schools. In spite of COVID and the challenges that we're all experiencing, we still do have a goal of reaching 2 million students by 2022. So we do have a really simple step-by-step -step process in participating in the program. So first you would start by connecting and building your eco team. And many of you may already have environment clubs or social justice clubs or, or eco teams in a variety of ways at your school. So it's not about reinventing the wheel, but it's about sort of accessing and documenting some of the practices that are already taking place. 
We invite schools to review and collaborate to set goals for the year. And that's really up to you. It is, um, we set the framework and really it is schools that bring it to life. So you're able to tap into issues that are locally relevant to you and important to your students and school community. We then invite you to create a custom environmental action plan and I'll show you what that looks like on the platform. And then engage and activate your, your broader school community so that everybody is on the same page and everyone's moving forward. When actions and initiatives sort of wrap up, we invite you to reflect and highlight all the successes. Take the time to celebrate all of your hard work and the achievements that you've made, as well as look for opportunities for improvement as you think ahead to next year. And again, celebration. So sharing your accomplishments, um, really celebrating your hard work and thinking about how we can improve as we move forward. There are five levels of achievement, um, so four levels of achievement plus a participant level um, within the Eco Schools program. So on an annual basis, depending on how um, large or small they want their Eco Schools program to look like, schools will receive a recognition seal for their participation. So those levels range from bronze to platinum. And then we also have a participant seal. So for schools that are just starting out and want to keep their program pretty small, we do want to recognize them as part of the Eco Schools community as a valuable participant and contributor to the network. So COVID, as Marie mentioned, has uh, really impacted us in a variety of ways, especially across the education sector. And I just wanted to flag that um, at the onset of this year, EcoSchools did take a deep dive into all of the actions that we're supporting in school communities. And we did assign a risk assessment framework to those actions. So every action was um, identified with a risk level of, of one to three. And then we've provided opportunities to um, either modify or adjust those actions to then be able to perform them or accommodate those criteria in a remote learning situation, in a hybrid learning situation or in school with safety measures in place. Now I'm going to hop really quickly onto the platform just to give you a quick tour of, of what we can offer in terms of the framework and how it might help guide your environmental program. So this is the EcoSchools dashboard. It is accessible to students and teachers. We have privacy and security measures in place to ensure that we're not collecting and storing any student information and that everything is safe and secure for a student experience. But we do see this space as a really collaborative hub for any member of the school community that wants to join in on the conversation around environmental education and climate action or just check out what's happening with the eco team. So as you can see here, this school, this demo school is eligible for platinum. They are, are on their way to uh, achieving platinum certification this year, and they've decided to take on 12 actions. And as I mentioned earlier, EcoSchools is not about reinventing the wheel. There's likely things that you're already doing in your school communities that can be recognized and counted towards your certification application. This is just sort of a framework to help guide those actions. And again, start thinking about the collective impact of all of our schools working together. A school would start at the Action Library, and this is a great place to begin a conversation with your students and the broader school community about what you want to focus on. This year we launched 43 actions and our list of actions keeps growing and growing as new partners are introducing us to new things that are happening at schools and um, schools are bringing forward ideas that they'd like to see recognized in the program. Our vision for the list of actions is really to create a, a community curated space where that's very reflective of the reality of what's happening within schools. So as schools um, you know, have a conversation about the different actions they'd like to take, they can just like online shopping, add the action to their environmental plan for this year. So if they're interested in maybe doing a community cleanup, they can easily add that action to their plan. And so through this process, they can curate and sort of focus on different subject areas or thematic areas that they'd like to work on. All of the actions are searchable by keyword and they're also searchable by theme. Then once you've got your sort of plan in place for the year, you can navigate over to our plan. And again, this is a space where students and teachers um, participate equally and they can each have autonomy and agency over how the plan is formed. The plan is intended to be a dynamic process. So for example, if a school decides, you know, we're really not going to do an anti-idling campaign, they can remove that throughout the year. So plans can grow and shrink and expand and, and become more elaborate um, as schools get deeper into the program and as the realities of that school year start to unfold. 
I should mention too, uh, just a reminder that everything is available in English and French. So at any time a school can toggle between English and French and schools can then um, decide to complete all of the uh, application in one language or if French immersion schools would like to complete a portion in English or French, they can do that as well. Every action has a, a breadth of information that's available to you. So by clicking on an action, you can hop in and I'll just showcase a few little features here. So every action begins with a bit of an about section to kind of situate the action in the larger context of the environmental movement. There are curriculum connections and this year we've chosen to really take a high level approach to subject areas and themes and we are working on drilling this down to then reflect better and more explicit connections to curriculum. Every action is connected to the Foundation for Environmental Education themes, and these are common across the entire global network of eco schools. As I mentioned, we also connect to the, excuse me, the Sustainable Development Goals. And finally, we have a community curated space where schools can check out what other schools have done. So this is looking a little sparse and we're growing our, our carousel of photos of every day. But this is an opportunity for schools to draw inspiration from other schools that have completed a similar action. Every action is accompanied by an action guide and it's not intended to be a very prescriptive um, instruction manual, but more ideas and prompts and inspirations and things you might consider as you take on this action. Schools can also access a variety of resources, both regional and national in English and French. And then there's a series of certification questions that we ask schools to complete. Now, schools can decide how far they want to take each action. So if you just want to build an awareness campaign, this card is around sustainable transportation, that's fantastic. If you actually want to implement a sustainable tra um, transportation initiative or project at your school, you can take it a little deeper. And so schools are able to decide how much or little they want to complete of the certification questions. And as you self-report to us, um, your number of points increases. So I can scroll down here and you can see that this school has achieved 3.5 points out of a possible 10 points for sustainable transportation. Schools can then decide to come back later or complete the action as is if they like. So that we can come back later for that one. What we're really excited about is this collective impact possibility with the platform. So for this year, we've selected nine impact tiles and this is um, blank, they're all zeros because this is a demo school, um, but we've selected nine impact measures that we're reporting on across the eco school system. So we're inviting schools to take action around these nine areas and then report back to us. So we can not only showcase their achievements but add their achievements to that collective impact framework and really situate yourselves in this larger environmental movement. Schools can also start to benchmark their experience this year versus last year versus a Canadian average. So a great example here is the hours of outdoor learning, where you can, when, when a school completes the data, um, they can uh, measure their impact this year, review it last year, and then measure that against a Canadian Eco Schools average to see how they want to either increase their efforts um, or maybe focus on something else next year. Finally, um, we aggregate all of this data. So this is actually live data in the system. So right now we have um, just over a thousand schools participating on the platform. There are about six and a half thousand environmental leaders working on eco teams right now. And for example, 43 hours, uh, 43,000 hours rather of outdoor learning. And this is something that we're tracking um, quite consistently because COVID is um, really inviting outdoor learning to occur in a very different way. And so we're tracking the outdoor learning explicitly as a response to COVID. So back to the presentation. So I just wanted to show you a few things that happen in school. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're saying, you know, the framework is all fine and good, but what does this look like in my school community? And so often it looks like recognition. Um, so we see a lot of golden shoe awards, golden water bottle awards, golden lunchbox awards. And these are often given to either a student or a classroom that is taking action around a specific theme. These can often be presented very publicly at school of assemblies when we're allowed to have a assemblies again, um, or over the PA or through a, an email to the broader school community to really highlight that recognition and celebrate the energy and effort that's being put into each action. 
We also see a lot of outdoor learning, um, as I mentioned, and taking advantage of every subject and every strand outside. Um, when I made this deck, there were only 41,000 hours of outdoor learning, and I see that that's increased quite a bit over the last few weeks. Um, so that's great to see that teachers are taking their students outside to enrich learning um, in a variety of ways. We also see a lot of energy campaigns, and these are two quick ones that I'll share with you. On the left here, we have the energy hog, and the energy hog can look like anything. It can be a pig or a monster or something. And um, typically what happens with the energy hog is the energy hog appears in the classroom that maybe has left their lights on when not in use. So over recess or during break time, if the lights are left on, the energy hog magically appears in your classroom. And then it becomes that classroom's challenge to to find out where the energy hog belongs next. So that entire class is on the lookout for um, any lights that are left on and can then pop the energy hog into that classroom. And the energy hog, I mean, you can decide whether it's sort of a carrot or a stick that works well within your school culture. Um, the energy hog goes over very well in some schools where it can be sort of friendly competition. But I have also heard of three schools where the energy hog was kidnapped, never to return again. Um, and so you can make that call whether whether the energy hog might be successful or not. On the right, we have monitor monsters. And this is a great activity for especially the younger grades to create little monsters that sit on top of your monitor and remind you to turn it off either at the end of the day or whatever your IT protocols recommend. We also see a lot of gardening and outdoor, um, outdoor spaces that are being transformed by students. So here we see a fantastic example of student created signage. We always find that signage is a really important way to share with the broader community what you are doing and why it is important that you're transforming your school grounds. We see a lot of pollinator gardens, pizza gardens, salsa gardens, medicine wheel gardens, a variety of different ways that students are incorporating um, outdoor learning and gardening to both improve biodiversity, but also to access fresh and local food. And finally, we see quite a few pledges. Um, and so typically around Earth Day or Sweater Day or um, national initiatives, we see a lot of, of public displays of pledges. And this can also really encourage that message of sustainability from school to home. So as students are creating pledges and, and posting them publicly uh, within the school, you can also invite the parent community and the broader school community to get involved with pledges. And maybe they're sharing those with their children, they're sharing them over social media to really generate a conversation around um, the types of actions that are being taken across the school community. So within the EcoSchools framework, because it is free and no cost to you to hop onto the platform, I encourage you to register at app.ecoschools.ca to go in and explore for yourself. You can access uh, regional resources and national resources, as well as just play around and see the type of actions that we're offering right now. Just again, with the caveat that that list of actions is increasing and expanding every day. And if you don't see something that you'd love to see as part of the EcoSchools program, let us know. We're really excited to bring that community spirit and community innovation to the forefront. Off the top though, there are four upcoming initiatives that you might want to take play or take advantage of. And you can learn more about them in the ECA. One is National Goose Paper Day. So goose paper is good on one side paper. And that's an encouragement to create boxes. They're often shaped like geese um, in your classroom or in an ad admin area of your school or even at home uh, to collect goose paper to ensure that both sides are being used before it goes to the recycle bin. We also have Earth Day coming up as well, and we're hosting a national environmental education conference uh, in and around Earth Day. So I encourage you to check that out as well. There's a program called Young Reporters for the Environment that is an environmental sort of activism um, and journalism contest that we run that encourages students to either take photos or videos or write an article about something that they're passionate about. And then also coming up in March um, is the Great Gulp. And the Great Gulp is a synchronized uh, sip of tap water um, that we all take together from a reusable mug or bottle to really um, highlight the conversation around access to clean tap water, as well as um, single use plastics and sort of how can we reduce single use plastics in our daily lives. 
So I encourage you to connect with us. Our, on our website, we have a variety of resources. Um, our social media channels are often featuring new initiatives and campaigns that are coming up. Um, and so in addition to registering for the ECA, I encourage you to follow us and check out our website. And I would be remiss if I didn't just acknowledge a, a few of the partners that we're working with that enable us to do the work that we do. So we're very grateful to be working in partnership with some fantastic organizations and companies. Thank you so much, Lindsay. All right. Well, um, in the uh, I noticed that we have a couple of quick questions here in the chat. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to um, invite uh, Lindsay Lunau to uh, uh, maybe uh, cue her presentation. And while she does that, I'm uh, going to, um, I noticed there were a, a couple of really interesting questions in the chat. And one of them had to do is how do you actually get this started in the school? So Lindsay, I wonder if you could uh, speak to that. Is it, uh, does it have to come from the administration or can it come from the teachers or the eco club? What is the, the typical way of... Um... Yeah, it can come from anyone. Often we see a teacher lead taking on the project. Um, however, we have seen admin take it on as the lead. We've seen parents take it on and register their, their child's school and start the eco team, different volunteers. Um, also custodians and caretakers within the school community can be very active participants because as you know, they're often the gatekeepers to a lot of those operational pieces that happen within schools. It, it doesn't necessarily need to to, to live with, with admin. Um, and once you create an account for your school, you can invite any number of adults or students to your team. So you can extend those invitations, see who's interested in coming on uh, to help support the initiative. And then it doesn't become sort of the burden on one person. You can really you know, disperse, uh, you know, it's the many hands make light work, right? And so thinking about which, ac which actions might inspire or could be supported by someone if a teacher's very keen on gardening, if you've got someone else that's really IT focused, you've got someone that's keen to learn about energy, you can really sort of divide and conquer and decentralize that so that it is a, a truly collaborative and culminating task. Thanks, Lindsay. And I, I noticed that uh, our number two, Lindsay, Lindsay Luna from the City of Calgary is already here. Um, also, I just wanted to point out uh, to the person who asked that question, um, we will be coming back to, I will be showing to uh, the, um, the resources and the website that we've put together specifically for Calgary teachers. And that would also help to get started. So without, uh, I think we'll leave it at that for questions. And now I'll invite uh, Lindsay Luna from the city to, uh, to, take it, to take it from here. Thanks so much, Marie. Um, so I'm just really here as the city representative to reiterate how we cannot find success in a lot of the policies and strategies and plans that we put forward at the city without partnering in the community. So we're so excited to be partnered with the school boards, with Eco Schools, and with ACE on this great Eco Schools initiative. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that the city has, um, through our environmental management program, transitioned our support um, for the Eco Leaders program to support for Eco Schools Canada. Um, and we We've done this for a couple of reasons. Um, Eco Schools was a pretty exclusive program, or sorry, Eco Leaders was a pretty exclusive program where we could only accept 30 schools a year to participate with the city, whereas Eco Schools is now open to all Calgary schools. And the other really exciting thing about Eco Schools is that it's got that combined results reporting um, so that we get to see what's happening not just in the public board or the separate board, but the results of all Calgary schools together. Um, the other exciting things about um, Eco Schools is that um, we want to give Eco Schools the opportunity to access subject matter experts from the city. And we'd also like to invite them to attend the Mayor's Environment Expo in June each year um, to learn what other schools are doing and to share about what they've achieved on a peer to peer basis. So what are the kinds of things that um, eco schools would help support in relation to city strategies and plans? So Marie's already mentioned the first one. There's some major links to our climate resilience strategy, which was approved in 2018. And just before I continue, I just wanted to note that all of my slides are hyperlinked. So um, if you are viewing my slides after, you can click on this image to take you to our climate program or this image to take you to our climate resilience strategy. Um, so 
as Marie mentioned in the beginning, that Calgary Schools for Climate Action was actually established out of our climate resilience strategy and remains a subcommittee of our Calgary Climate Panel. So the great thing is the city has some resources to put behind supporting this initiative. Um, we also notice a lot of really great ties to the different eco-school actions within the, the strategy itself and the things that the city is doing. So just to highlight some of those ties around energy consumption, waste reduction, and active transportation that are happening at the city. Um, the first one would be related to the different solar projects that are happening at the city. Um, in 2018, we opened the solar park at the Shepherd uh, compost facility. Um, it was at the time and remains the largest solar park in Canada. Um, we've also got uh, solar at the Bears Paw uh, water treatment plant and now installed on top of Southland Leisure Center. So if you're interested in any of that, again, you can click on my pictures and it will take you to information about all of those projects. Um, our waste and recycling group has done an amazing job putting together resources for teachers to make it really easy um, to do activities in class. I really like this sorting it right quiz where kids can just go and test their sorting knowledge for what goes where uh, for our waste and recycling. And the last in the area here around active transportation, we have, we're supporting schools um, and the broader community with all information about cycling education. Um, in a different vein, we've also got links to a lot of the city's other strategies. Right now, we're doing work to pull in things like our water strategy, um, waste reduction, biodiversity strategies into one uh, comprehensive environmental strategy and action plan, which will go to council in June. Um, so it will have ties to eco schools and support for schools related to biodiversity and naturalization, uh, water efficiency, air quality, and of course we support schools annually with the Mayor's Environment Expo. So just a couple of examples from the city um, that you could use in the classroom. Um, we've got a lot on the site um, for, this was put together as part of COVID for learning at home, but it has a lot of great activities that are also transferable to the classroom. So I really encourage you to visit that. And um, this is just one example of what's available. Um, Calgary became a bee city last year, which is really, really exciting. So we have a lot of resources to support um, bees and pollinators in the city. Um, so one activity is around building a bee hotel and the Parks Department has also gone ahead with uh, creating a bee boulevard in Canyon Meadows, which has a whole bunch of different kinds of bee hotels and the right kinds of plants for pollinators. Um, within water, um, Maggie uh, has led this amazing project to do a bioengineering uh, demonstration and education project. So there's videos online about it, or you, if you're close enough, you could also take students out for um, a field trip out to the site. Um, and in the air um, category, air quality, we partner with CRAS. And right now we're in negotiations to try to get purple air monitors for our eco schools. You can actually monitor air quality on your schools. Um, but they do do continuous air monitoring at different areas around the city, which you can check out. And they have great resources for idle free campaigns. Um, the last thing I'll mention in my very short time is that Mayor's Environment Expo this year will be 100% virtual and 100% free for all schools to participate. As it stands today, we've got 80 different workshops available for K-12. to um, So there's a link there to sign up for our mailing list or you can reach me anytime through expo at calgary.ca. And that's the end of my presentation, Marie. I'll pass it over to whoever's next. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yeah, next up will be Olana Olafsson from the Calgary Board of Education. Um, so while she's queuing that up, just wanted to uh, to say, wow, um, it's so great, Lindsay, to hear about everything that the city's doing. And that's the whole point of this, uh, this initiative is that um, we feel like, you know, like a school, um, the school community and teachers don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, there's a lot of great things going on and we just need to learn from that and then see how we can get involved. So uh, I see Olana's ready. So Olana, um, we're a little short on time, so I'll, I'll invite you to take it away right now. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Everyone can hear me? Yeah, thumbs up. Um, thank you for the invitation to present and provide the uh, kind of a larger school district 
perspective. So in that vein, uh, I always like to start off with a slide about how big we are and collectively as public schools in Calgary. So not only CBE, but also the Calgary Catholic and our charter schools. Um, we're, we probably are this equivalent size of the fifth largest city in Alberta. So we represent a lot of students and staff. So when, when Lindsay talked, both Lindsay's talked about collective action, um, we can really demonstrate quite a move of the needle when, when we all work together collectively. So at this top level, oh, let me just find my mouse. Here we go. Um, the board of directors sets policies. And so there are operational expectations and results. The operational expectations are around how the um, schools and system operate their buildings and the results are how we turn out our students. So what happens with learning in the classroom. And so these are two examples of those policies that focus specifically on environmental sustainability and climate action. And so under these policies sit the three-year education plan that talks about um, how we engage students in the classroom, how we develop our employees, and how we strategically allocate our resources in the system in order to achieve all of these operational expectations and result ends. So the environmental kind of the um, strategic pieces of sustainability sit under the strategic allocation of resources, but also in achievement and well-being. So talking about um, personalized learning and how we develop our students in the classroom. So the CBE has a sustainability framework where the Calgary Board of Education had declared that it will advance student achievement in sustainability and be a leader in sustainable practices and behaviors. So on the advancing student achievement side, there is great support for this EcoSchools program because there, there's lots of great work being done on a classroom level and a school level already. And this is just one more way that teachers can be supported and recognized for the great work that they're doing. And it gives us a different view of that community collective action happening across schools, as well as show schools that they're supported so that they're not alone in their individual action, but that there's other schools doing the same or similar actions to achieve kind of that greater end. Also in our sustainability framework, we have set targets um, so we set targets to 2020, which just ended. So right now we're in a huge kind of data collection and wrap up to see how did we do against the targets that we set. And so we set targets in uh, waste reduction, water conservation, uh, energy intensity, and also um, putting solar PV systems on our schools in order to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. And so We've done a little bit of um, data collection and reporting in our chief's updates around waste. So we're at about 74% waste reduction by weight. So we've reduced by 74% since 2007, eight levels of waste going to landfill. So awesome work to our community because we couldn't have done it without all of our schools pitching in to help us achieve these targets. So that's just one example. And here's some, just a little snapshot of things that are going on in the system to achieve these targets, but also that would contribute to your EcoSchool certification. So work that's already being done in schools, you could log on and say, yeah, I'm already doing this activity and it would count towards this action plan and these certification points. So it's, it's I think it's a really great, way to showcase the good work already being done. 
And these are examples of some collaborative projects. So not only across the system, but also with partnership outside the system. So either with the city of Calgary. So city of Calgary helps some of our schools with their waste audits. Um, we also have partnerships with our solar companies and we're able to share all of our solar data online so schools can see what they're generating and what that equivalent generation is. And as Lindsay from EcoSchools had noted, there has been a lot more um, taking learning outside. So there's a COVID benefit, but there's also the natural world connection benefit. And so we, we've seen a lot of that happening. And the last person that I want to mention as being an awesome resource in your school is your facility operator, because they really know the school and can help kind of open up doors around using your school as a teaching tool. And that was like a super quick snapshot because I know that we're pressed for time, but there is my email and please be sure to reach out if you have any questions about how kind of some of these system and facility initiatives and data can help support the work that you're doing in your school. Thank you so much, Alana. Um, so uh, we'll now move on to Sheena Bifford from the Calgary Separate School District. And I noticed that they know there's ongoing questions going on in the chat and we have lots of uh, presenters here, able-bodied presenters to uh, answer some of those questions. So that's wonderful. So keep your questions coming in the chat. And uh, Sheena um, is our last presenter for today before the wrap up. So uh, go ahead there, Sheena. Okay, let's just quickly check my microphone. Everything good? All good. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Thanks, Marie. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Sheena Biffert, and I'm excited to be here with you today. I'm the elementary science consultant with the Calgary Separate School District. And previous to this, I was a teacher lead in the Eco Leader program in one of the CSSD schools in Calgary. So together with my partners today, I'll just continue the discussion on how EcoSchools supports our school district and learning priorities, focusing in on the top three questions that all educators have about EcoSchools. And if you still have some questions after this, please do get in touch with me. And my email address is up there for you. Okay. So to begin, I'd like to highlight our Board of Trustees priorities for this school year. Please keep in mind that these priorities are similar across Calgary's different school communities and that we work in close partnership and hold similar priorities around sustainability and climate action. So at Calgary Catholic, we center our work around four common priorities, student success, wellness for all, FNMI work towards reconciliation and faith formation. So how does this tie into eco schools? Well, for all Calgary school communities, student success is centered around a student-centered approach with assessment practices embedded. This ties in nicely to the EcoSchools initiative as the program runs off the premise of student-developed projects based off the needs of the school and the school community. Reconciliation integrates nicely into the project work as students learn to understand that all our actions directly impact that of the greater community and the environment around us, focusing in on that foundational Indigenous knowledge of connections to the land. Also included in this important work is supporting and developing the social emotional wellness of our students, teaching them the skills necessary to a brighter and healthier environmental future. So how can eco schools impact your classroom, your school, and your greater community? So I thought I would answer this question by answering the top three questions that most educators seem to ask me when considering eco schools. So the first question is, how would my class benefit from this? So like mentioned earlier, eco schools aligns nicely with the Calgary school community priorities. Um, providing opportunity for students to be leaders within their school community and participate in real life skill based action projects that build connections to the land. This can really help students develop those critical thinking skills we know are fundamental to succeeding in our world today. Not only that, but this work can build real empathy within our students, which is the driving force for real environmental action. 
And lastly, these action projects tap into students' curiosity, adventurism, and need to connect to the natural world. Through these hands-on and interdisciplinary approach opportunities, action projects can take your learning beyond the four walls of the classroom, growing your school community, connecting to the greater school community, and most importantly, learning off the land, which is something that's become so popular during these COVID times, like Lindsay showed you earlier. Question number two, how might eco schools be incorporated into an elementary school classroom and elementary school? So like mentioned many times already, eco schools is not an extra add on to teachers workload, but rather a place to nicely collect and document the work our schools are already doing towards environmental sustainability. And it's also a way to receive recognition for this fantastic work, because it's a lot of work. So Within a classroom, eco-school activities can be completed within your science and social time blocks. Eventually, some activities or projects might take on cross-curricular work, integrating your project work across the disciplines. It could possibly look like one block a week within your classroom schedule. So depending on the scope of the project work, the possibilities are endless, the connections are endless, which we'll talk about next. Um, uh, your classroom might even want to eventually include the school community with school-wide action call to actions, engaging announcements over the intercom, like maybe composting songs or litterless lunch challenges, and maybe advertising through the hallways with posters and other creative means. So these are just some examples. As an elementary school, eco schools can be run as an extracurricular activity, possibly over the lunch hour. So with planned targeted mini lessons while students eat their lunches, followed by targeted project work for the second half of the lunch hour, a lot can get done, okay? The next question is, is there a list of overlapping outcomes between eco schools and science curriculum? Yes, there are lots and eco schools, eco schools has done a great job of providing curriculum connections for each grade and each topic in science and social and they've all been linked here for you on this slide for your convenience so you don't have to go searching. So like mentioned before, the possibility of cross curricular work is endless. It just depends on the teacher and how far she wants to let or he, he or she wants to let the students take it. Um, there is a snapshot of what these curricular connections look like here. It's a grade four science example for topic A, waste in our world. So they've nicely connected curriculum to um, place in nature to indigenous perspectives, to climate change, and then to the city's initiatives and strategies. Um, so for more information, just don't hesitate to get in touch with anyone here today. For specific curriculum supports along the way, please reach out to your specific division consultants um, or your learning leaders in your schools. We'd be happy to support you along the way. Um, so just please don't hesitate to ever get in touch. You have our contact information on our slides. And with that, Marie, I'll pass it over to you guys. I guess I'm just- Thank you so much, to... uh, Sheena. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, love to hear, uh, you know, the connections there with uh, uh, directly for teachers and the, and the curriculum. Um, so I'm not seeing any uh, questions in the chat right now. So uh, I think in the interest of time, and we, we do want to end this session right on time, uh, I am going to proceed then with the wrap up of this session. I just want to, uh, I have a few take homes for, for uh, uh, to tie everything together. Um, at the end of this, though, uh, don't go away because I will be sharing the link, which is how you get in touch with us if you want to get all of these presentations and all the fabulous links that you've uh, have been mentioned will be provided to you if you contact us. At, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the presentation. So I am going to uh, now uh, go back to my presentation to my screen. And let's, um, uh, there we go. Just bringing everything together here. You can see my screen okay, yeah. All right, so um, to wrap it up, well, we've heard lots of great things about eco school. So I just wanted to do a little bit of a uh, run through here, 10 wonderful reasons to join eco schools. So 
First of all, as you've heard, there's lots and lots of links right to our Alberta curriculum. It's adaptable to all grades, all right? It links to real world action plans and strategies from local to global. And here, you know, we've mentioned like the city of Calgary's own strategies as well as the sustainable development goals. It provides a step-by-step -step process for creating a flexible environmental action plan that can be specifically tailored to your school. And if you remember how Lindsay Vines said, it's a bit like online shopping, you choose the actions that you're interested in or that fit your school's priorities and you can go with those. Um, there's 40 actions to choose from and each one comes with its own action guide and resources to get you going. So you don't need to be an expert. Um, it has a fantastic, very user-friendly online platform that allows you to track not only your own school's progress, but also the collective impact of multiple schools. It provides an opportunity to network and share and celebrate with other schools. It, um, uh, it, it, there's all sorts of resources and through this hands-on learning, it provides a wonderful opportunity to learn the skills and knowledge to help create a sustainable future. It provides a, a, a sense of hope and agency by actively engaging your students in solutions to our most pressing environmental problems. And then finally, number 10, it's free. Um, and that uh, to all publicly funded schools in Calgary. And that's thanks to our partnership with the city of Calgary. So we're really proud of this partnership and appreciate um, the immense collaboration that's gone into this. All right, so let's move on then. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Okay, when I get to the next slide, there we go. Um, so um, Lindsay Bunce uh, mentioned, you know, Eco Schools has its own website, but we've created um, the Calgary Eco Schools or Eco Schools Canada in Calgary website, specifically for Calgary teachers. And this is on the Alberta Council for Environmental uh, environmental education's website but anyways you can go here to learn all about the program and learn about the local resources that we've put together to support uh, very specifically to support teachers right here in Calgary and eventually what we hope is uh, throughout Alberta as we grow this program and so one example uh, of resources for you uh, we reached out earlier uh, well last year that is to our environmental education community and asked them what resources and programs do you have that you could uh, that would support Eco Schools 40 actions? And we've compiled all of these. I'm talking about resources from you know an, uh, organizations like Green Calgary on you know the experts on waste management, um, CPAWS, and you know experts on nature and biodiversity. Well, uh, you can go to our website and you can look up these resources for each of the Eco Schools actions. So that's just trying our attempt at trying to put like a local or regional flavor on this. Uh, eco schools program and as Sheena has mentioned we've created these curriculum links um, between uh, every unit in the K-9 science and social studies curriculum um, uh, links between the curriculum and four sustainability themes and these include uh, nature and place-based learning indigenous perspectives climate change and the city of Calgary's uh, environmental and climate action plans and strategy. So here's just some examples from the great two, for example, science unit on small crawling and flying animals. And I think what we have here, yeah, the five grade five unit on wetland ecosystems. So again, these are all available, uh, um, in, not only in Sheena's PowerPoint, but also uh, on our website um, and it's very easily accessible by grade and by subject. Um, I just uh, want to put in a quick reminder that it's not too late to join other sessions that are part of the elementary stream of this environmental symposium. Uh, and uh, let's see now if um, there's actually a direct link to the symposium, if I can find the chat here and put that in. Um, so lots of different sessions going on, waste management, water management, biodiversity, um, indigenous perspectives, and um, a session on climate um, action. This is all a part of our elementary stream. So check it out and, and join us for some other sessions if you care to. Um, and I'd also like to extend a huge word of thanks to our funders who generally support our work to help teachers infuse more environmental education into their everyday teaching. And obviously without their support, this work wouldn't be possible. So huge shout out to them. 
And that brings me to my final slide here. And, and maybe one of the most important ones. <laughs> and that is um, the one that includes the link um, to um, uh, the, uh, I'll just put that in the chat. So here's a link uh, that allows you then, um, it brings you to a very quick form to fill out uh, so that you can get the resources. Uh, we are compiling all of the presentations from today and we'll gladly send you out. And all of those presentations have embedded links in them so you can access all the resources. Um, there's also an opportunity here to provide us some feedback on the session. And those are just optional questions, but any feedback that you provide, we would really appreciate because we, uh, we value that very much and that's how we continue to improve our workshops. So, um, um, at this point, um, I want to thank all of our presenters one more time for your fast, uh, fantastic presentations. And thank you so much uh, for all the participants for joining us. Um, I am going to stop the recording here. Um, I think our time is just about up, but I don't think we're necessarily going to get booted off right away. This is our own Zoom account. So once I've stopped the recording, um, I, I would invite everyone to just hang out a little bit. And if there are more questions, then we'll be happy to uh, entertain them at that time. So uh, thanks so much for joining us, everyone.